Hi guys, welcome to this video on molar volumes and the calculations that can be carried out based on it. If we start off with the definition then. At a given temperature and pressure, one mole of any gas occupies the same volume. So if you have one mole, the volume will be the same regardless of what gas it is. Now to help you with any calculations around this, there's this magic triangle here. So this tells you that you've got your volume in decimeters cubed, which hopefully you remember is centimeters cubed divided by a thousand. You have your moles in the bottom left hand corner. Working out moles uses this triangle that you've used before. That's if you start off with a solid, and I'll go into that in more detail later. And then you have your molar volume, which is the volume occupied by one mole of any gas at room temperature and pressure, which for every gas at room temperature and pressure is 24 decimeters cubed. So let's see what I mean. So I've got a question here and it says calculate the volume of 0.25 moles of hydrogen at room temperature and pressure. And it gives you the molar volume of 24 decimeters cubed per mole. So from the triangle you can see that volume is moles times by molar volume. So what I have to do is take my moles of 0.25, my molar volume of 24, and multiply them together. And this gives me an answer of 6 decimeters cubed. Now provided the temperature and pressure stay the same, those calculations are all the same. And usually at GCSE that's all you'll be given. So if we have a look at another example, this one's a bit of a rearranging one. It says calculate the amount of carbon dioxide that occupies 120 centimeters cubed at room temperature and pressure, again giving you your molar volume. So when it says the amount, it's talking about the moles. To work that out, as you can see from this triangle here, it's volume divided by our molar volume. It's given as a volume of 120 centimeters cubed. We now have to convert that into decimeters cubed, which is 120 divided by 1000, giving me 0.12 decimeters cubed. Then I divide that number by my molar volume, which is 24 decimeters cubed per mole. So 0.12 divided by 24 gives me an answer of 0.005 moles. And that is it. That's all you need to know. Or is it? Now, if you remember back at the beginning, I gave you that other triangle for moles, and that comes into play specifically when you start off with a mass of something. So for example, this question here says I have 5.1 grams of copper, and I'm reacting it with hydrochloric acid to form copper chloride and hydrogen gas. It gives you the balanced equation here. It says calculate the volume of hydrogen produced at room temperature and pressure, giving you the molar volume, and the atomic masses of copper, hydrogen, and chlorine. Now, if we look at my original triangle, you can see I've got the molar volume, but I haven't got the moles, and I haven't got the actual volume in decimeters cubed. So I can't just use that triangle. That is where this triangle comes into play. So I want to work out the moles, I've got the mass, and I can work out the formula mass. So to attempt a question like this, step one, work out the moles. So you can see here, I have a mass of 5.1 grams, and then my formula mass for copper, well, I've only got one copper atom, so it's 63.5. So moles is mass divided by formula mass, which is 5.1 divided by 63.5, which gives me 0.08 moles to two decimal places. Step two, what I want to do is look at my ratio. So the ratio of copper atoms to my gas, which here is a ratio of one to one. So nice and simply, I've got 0.08 moles of hydrogen. And then step three, all I need to do now is work out my volume in decimeters cubed. So I can go back to my original triangle. I've got my moles now. I've got my molar volume. So it's 0.08 times by 24, giving me a volume of 1.92 decimeters cubed of hydrogen produced. One final example then. What happens if we don't have a ratio of one to one? So I've got hydrogen gas is made by reacting 10 grams of sodium with excess water. Again, you've got your balanced equation here. It says calculate the maximum volume of hydrogen that could be formed. Again, giving you your molar volumes and your atomic masses. So I have the molar volume, I don't have volume, and I don't have moles. So again, I need my other triangle. So if we start off with step one then, working out the moles. Moles is mass divided by formula mass. My mass is 10 grams, my formula mass, I've only got sodium. Because we're looking at the ratio here, I'm just going to go for 23. I'm not going to double it to go up to 46. 
So I have 10 divided by 23, which comes out to 0.435 moles of sodium. Now, this is where the ratio comes in for step two. As you can see here, I've got a ratio of two to one, two sodiums to my one hydrogen gas. So for every 0.435 moles of sodium, I need half of that for my hydrogen. So 0.435 divided by two gives me 0.218 moles of hydrogen, which is my second mark for step two. Then all that's left is to work out the volume in decimeters cubed. Volume, going back to my triangle on the left, is moles times by molar volume. So 0.218 times by 24 gives me 5.23 decimeters cubed for my final answer. And that's everything that you need to know. I have got a couple of questions for you, so what I'd like you to do is pause the video, have a go at both of them, see how you get on. Once you're happy, unpause the video, we'll go through and we'll see how you've done. Right, let's look at the first question then. So it says calculate the volume of 0.1 moles of argon at room temperature and pressure, again giving you the molar volume. So if we have a look at our triangle, we've got the moles, we've got the molar volume, so volume is nice and simply moles times by molar volume, 0.1 times by 24 comes out to 2.4 decimeters cubed for your one mark. Let's have a look at our second question then. So calculate the mass of sodium hydroxide needed to absorb 18 decimeters cubed of carbon dioxide. Again, giving you the balanced equation, the atomic masses and the molar volume. Now hopefully you've noticed straight away this is a very different one and a lot more complicated. You have to do some rearranging as well. So let's have a look at our two triangles. You can see that we want the mass. If we look at our left triangle, we have the volume in decimeters cubed. We've been given the molar volume. So from that, we can work out our moles of carbon dioxide, which is volume divided by molar volume. So 18 divided by 24 gives me 0.75 decimeters cubed. So the next step is to move on to the ratio. Now, hopefully you can see from the balanced equation, I have a ratio of two to one between my sodium hydroxide and my carbon dioxide. Now I have 0.75 moles of carbon dioxide. That's what we've just calculated. That's my one, I have a ratio of one to two. So therefore 0.75 times by two gives me 1.5 moles of sodium hydroxide. The final step is to work out the mass. So if you remember, mass is moles times by formula mass. We've just worked out our moles, which is 1.5. Therefore, all that's left is to work out my formula mass, which if you have a look at sodium hydroxide on the left, I've got one sodium, which is 23, one oxygen, which is 16, and one hydrogen, which is one. Add that all together is 40. So my formula mass is 40. Therefore, 1.5 times by 40 gives me a final mass of sodium hydroxide of 60 grams. And that's everything there is to this video. So I have got a review question for you. Again, feel free to have a go if you want to. You can put the answer down below. Let me know how you've got on and I'll tell you if you're right. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel. You can check out the latest video and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.